Good evening and welcome. Tonight we will be going over the history and geography of Akita Prefecture in Japan. Akita is located in the northern area of the island of Honshu, known as Toku. Um, you can't see it on the map, but Tokyo is just down there, so we're heading north, north, north from Tokyo up to Akita. Akita is really known for its forests when it comes to geography. Aki, Japanese, means autumn. You know, I can speak like kindergarten level Japanese, so I know like my days of the week and numbers and, and my seasons, so I know Aki means autumn. Akita means autumn fields. Fields pertaining to the rice fields because the um, big, big mountains of northern Japan cut through kind of like the, the spine of the island here. The waters come down and make for some nice moist rice paddy. And this area is really now renowned for its autumn foliage. It's one of those areas where the trees turn just so many beautiful, beautiful shades of autumn. So, a lot of people visit in the fall. The largest city here is Akita. And there are lots of little spots of cities and things, but... Um, it's mostly a forested, mountainous area. In fact, there is a UNESCO World Heritage Site up here in northern Akita. It goes into Aomori up here also. Let's check it out on UNESCO's website. Let me pull it up real quick. Here we go. Okay. It's super zoomed in, but that's fine. There we go. Shirakami Sanchi is the name of this wooded area. There's not a very large description. It says, situated in the mountains of northern Honshu. This trackless site includes the last virgin remains of the cool, temperate forest of Seabold's beech trees that once covered the hills and mountain slopes of northern Japan. Black bear, the zero, and 87 species of birds can be found in this forest. <laughs> very, very, uh, like, whimsical, right? It's one of those forests where fairies would live and little forest creatures, little Mononokehime creatures, right? Uh, but here's a good picture of the beautiful trees in autumn. Let's slide that out the way. Here we go. Um, the deepest lake in Japan, not the largest, but the deepest, is right here. It's known as Lake Tazawa. And uh, you can't bring up Akita's cultural history without mentioning Oga. You can see the Oga Peninsula right here. There's a very, very old tradition that up in the, the mountains and forests here of the Oga Peninsula live the Namahage. And we'll take a look at them on Google Earth once we get to um, that part. The Namahage are very, very fierce looking Oni demons. And it has become a tradition that on New Year's Day they come down from the mountains and they torment children. It's one of those winter holiday children's nightmare creatures. They uh, run around yelling, are there any crying children? And they harass terrified children to convince them to be good and study in school and all those things. It's so neat. I love that there's so many different cultures around the world that are all about like terrifying children in the winter time. It's so funny. But anyway, that's really cool. Like I said, we'll take a look on Google Earth in a, in a bit. Let's talk about the history of this interesting little section of Japan. Due to the various mountains up here, 
this area was really cut off from the early development of the Japanese culture down here in like central Honshu. So the people that lived here were mostly hunter-gatherers living in cool little straw and wood houses, some of which have been preserved. This is mainly during the Jomon era, just like kind of the earliest civilization of Japan, at least the, the earliest era, followed by the Yayoi, which is when things really start coming along in terms of um, culture and farming and all of that. The Japanese wouldn't actually arrive in this area until 658, and um, development wouldn't really begin until much later. Akita Castle was built in 733, so the Japanese were establishing themselves here, you know, separating themselves from the, the lowly hunter-gatherers, lowly rice farmers, you know, they were better. And for the most part, this area was just ruled by various shoguns, and, well not shoguns yet, mostly daimyos, later shoguns, during the Warring States era. The Warring States era was just a, a huge political mess for the islands of Japan as it is, so uh, the ownership of this area changed hands many times, as you can imagine. But once kind of the dust settled from the Sengoku Jidai and the uh, Tokugawa shogunate took a hold on the islands here, this region was ruled by the Sakate clan. And that shogunate ruled until shogunates were outlawed during the Meiji Restoration. The biggest industry that popped up during this time which was a time where there was a huge cultural shift from farming and traditional ways of life to just ultra-modernization, was oil. Lots and lots of oil refineries and stuff happening here along the coast. And, and of lots of other industries as well, of course. That was kind of the main focus of here. And that would come back to bite them because... This area was bombed by the Americans on August 15th, 1945. They bombed Akita, aiming for the oil areas, but, you know, in Japan, they just pack everything on top of each other. So many, many civilians lost their lives. And you might be thinking, hey, Summer Geographica, you've got those dates wrong. There's no way that there is a bombing attack August 15th, 1945, right? But no. They bombed the city just hours before Japan surrendered to the Allies slash United States. Hours. Like, literally, they bombed it in the early morning. By the end of the day, Japan had surrendered. It was the last major bombing operation that the U.S. Um, carried out on Japan. But, of course, it's built up from that and is mostly an area known for its um, really good chicken. Apparently, Akita is the best chicken in Japan. Uh, and also really known for the dog breeds. If you haven't seen, uh, in America, we call them Akitas. It's pronounced Akita, but the dog in American English is Akita. They are big, chunky floofers. They are so sweet. They look like just very, very fluffy Shiba Inus. <laughs> They're very, very sweet dogs. Um, and, yeah, lots of interesting cultural festivals. They're known for this, this huge festival where they balance lanterns on top of their heads. Which doesn't sound like much until you see that they balance like a hundred lanterns at once on these big sticks on their heads or on their backs, whatever they can. Really cool. And, um, yeah, it's kind of, um, uh, it's always been kind of the, the country, kind of wayside area of Japan, right? But um, that leads to interesting little pockets of really cool cultural cuisine and traditions and dialects and things like that. I think that's so cool. So let me switch the tablet over to Google Earth and slide it back over here for you. So... 
first I've got um, Akita highlighted here. Let me zoom out so you can see exactly where you are because this map doesn't really show you much, does it? So here's Japan. Here's the main island of Honshu. And this up here is considered the Toku region up here. Kind of... Let's see, if I were to compare this to a region of the United States, it would be like the Minnesota, Michigan area, Wisconsin area. Farming, quaint, cute dialects, and their own kind of thing. So let's first check out the city of Akita. Then we'll look at Olga and then the countryside. Let's see what we can explore here because Japan is so comprehensive on Google Earth. They've marked everything. Sadly, this isn't one of the 3D areas, um, but yeah, let's check out Akita Museum of Art. Look how cool. Can't go wrong with a cool museum. I wonder if we're going to see any of the pieces. <laughs> just cool architecture. Maybe just cool architecture. Ooh, you got some pie. <laughs> the gift shop. Oh, look, oh, look, oh, look, oh, look. Here he goes, balancing on his hand all of these lanterns. How neat is that? It's really neat to see pictures of it at night when they're all lit up. Very, very neat. Oh, I'm glad I found that <laughs> cute little mascot there. If you know Japan, you know they love their mascots. Oh my. The troll home. Oh, they're bunnies. <laughs> it's Peter Rabbit. Flopsy, Mopsy, and Cottontail. Oh, how sweet. Anyway. Um, but yeah, as you can see, it's a big old city in Japan. <laughs> they all kind of have their own cute things about them, but a lot of them have a lot of similarities, like big old parks, fun little museums and theme parks, and of course like temples and things, and castles, but, um, you know all kind of the same, but they're all unique in their own way, I guess. I'm gonna head over to Oka and show you what guys, the, the big demons that live there. The Namahage. So let's start off here at the Namahage Museum, where you can see here's some full-size Namahage displaying the masks, and yes, they always carry bladed weapons to terrorize the children. These guys are all over the Oka Peninsula. There's the museum. It's so cool. And I think... Ooh, that's neat. Big old boulder. Yeah, you can actually meet some. <laughs> they do the whole ceremony for tourists. And it looks like they're drinking some tea. <laughs> Having a moment of civility. Yeah, these guys are just everywhere in this part of Japan. They're on everything. But the coolest, there's a bunch of these around the peninsula, are gigantic statues of them. They are coming for you. <laughs> they are after you. Mostly there for like cool tourist pictures so that you can uh, like pretend you're being chased by them and stuff. Or you park your car, looks like it's coming after your car. <laughs> but they have a bunch of those around. And then... I was like, Godzilla rock. Look at this rock. It's Godzilla. <laughs> it's so neat. Just a personal note, Godzilla has been popping up in my life, like, a lot. Like, it's not a coincidence at this point. I think I know what the universe is telling me, and if all goes well, I'll show you in a couple of months. But here you can see just how forested this region is because you know you think Japan you think it's absolutely covered in miles upon miles upon miles of city but look at how much green is in this prefecture so so much here is the big lake Lake Tozawa it was actually a volcano that blew its top and collapsed and turned into a lake it's a pretty statue here of the lake goddess emerging from the water. How cool is that? And let's see, what else do I need to show you? There's 
so many <laughs> there's so many cool things there's the city of Odate these cities are um, if I remember correctly Odate is the second largest city in the prefecture no, Ogata is the second largest city you can see how industrialized it looks huh? very cool look, it's a prefectural museum well, we gotta go there yeah, I think I, I did look at the slideshow there's a big mammoth some cool old stones all arranged so our ancestors wanted to arrange stones I don't know what this is we're, we're just not, it looks really creepy what homes would have looked like back then they, they got a bear skin too little trains, dinosaurs um, some kind of happy priest lots of dinosaurs, lots of really cool old 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 pots all of the ancient eras of Japan before there was writing are named after their forms of pottery. <laughs> Some friends there. Doraemon and Astro Boy. Very cool. Very strange. So yes. I think been exploring this area. There's so many cool waterfalls and things I can show you. Kuma Kuma Park. Okay, this is one I remember looking at. Let's look at a waterfall real quick before I start obsessing over bears, because again, I speak like elementary school Japanese. How beautiful is this, by the way? Kuma means bear. So we're going to look at some bears. So First, we're going to look at the beautiful nature here. There's a little mini, 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 mini shine there over the edge of the waterfall. How beautiful. Hiking in this area must be so rewarding and relaxing. Can you imagine? Oh, beautiful fall foliage, right? Big old dragonfly. Absolutely gorgeous scenery. And like I said, these are all over the prefecture. I've, I've looked at all the cool little things around. And um, there's lots of different beautiful waterfalls. They're all just as beautiful. Oops, there we go. But we need to look at some bears. Kuma Kuma Park. There's a bear. <laughs> of course, being in the woods, there's lots of bears in the area. But this is a little, a little safe place for them to thrive. their own structures there. They can play. Look at the beautiful scenery too. A purse. A big purse. Be careful they bite. Roar. <laughs> Climbing their little trees. Oh my gosh. There's the brown bear house. We can see the brown bear. There's a brown bear. Bunny rabbits too. Who doesn't love a good go to Akita. I think that would be a place I'd have to go and see the bears. But I think I'm going to cap it off there before I wind up falling down rabbit holes, or I guess bunny holes, <laughs> showing you the beautiful, beautiful landscape of this place. Let's look at one last waterfall as I close out the video. Thank you so much for watching. If you're interested in videos like this, since Going to every corner of the world, please consider subscribing. Next, we are heading over to Lebanon. Quite a change of pace, but I guess the link here is that you're going to see some more absolutely gorgeous trees, right? Oh, how cool. It's pretty at night. Yes, more beautiful, beautiful trees to come, so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out. I hope that you found this video relaxing and educational, and I hope that you have a very good, good, good